This is a fun new event from Venture Asheville. I'm so excited to have a professional comedian, actress, bottle of Asheville sensation. Earth and its mom. Uh -huh. Did you bring any stage? I didn't bring my stage. Uh, please give it up to Kayla Clark. Just met Demo Day, which is in October, and they joined up the week before with Hobby Cool. They can pitch about 200 people. But they've been to a pitch training, they've worked on the slides, and we're going to let them give a five minute Demo Day style pitch. Now, this is the part of the process that we typically do in private. After pitch training, founders go to a small room with two or three mentors, and then they pitch, and we'll stop them, and then break it down slide by slide. All the ways they can iterate and improve their messaging, delivery, slide content. Because it's typically a private process, please be kind and warm with better times. They're really putting themselves out here, quite vulnerable today for our judgment and entertainment. And then Kayla and I are going to go through like it's a little pitch scrub and really refine and work on this pitch with these folks. So you get a front seat into typically a private process. At the very end, We'll give you some time for general Q and A comments from the audience. So, thank you so much for being here. I hope this is as fun and interesting as I hope it's going to be. And with that, Namari, you gave you guys ready to rock and roll. Okay. So I'll set my timer, and then you won't hear from anyone in the room for five minutes. Hey y'all, I'm Namari, co-founder of Better Times, and I run and operate our small business. This is my partner, Chef Gabriel McIntosh, and at Better Times. Oh, there we are. At <laughs> Better Times, we're here to provide healthy food product alternatives. Here are the facts. Poor nutrition is making our nation sick. Fewer than 1 in 10 children and adults eat their daily recommended amounts of vegetables. The U.S. has the highest rate of people with multiple chronic conditions and obesity. We're sacrificing quality, we're sacrificing quality for convenience. At Better Times, we're here to take you back to whole ingredients, food that tastes good and is good for you. So, that means all of our products have zero preservatives, no additives, zero cane sugar, and we're focusing on organically sourcing as we also offer plant-based and gluten-free options. We need more healthy food options. Poor nutrition contributes to many diseases, leading to heart disease and some cancers, as well as food intolerances and allergies. The food and beverage companies spend on average $14 billion on marketing, and 80% of that goes into processed foods. We provide the increased demand for healthy food product alternative options that taste good and is good for you. Our mission is to promote an overall balanced diet for a sustainable lifestyle. While we would love to solve the entire problem, we're hoping to be part of the solution. At Better Times, we offer a product diversification mix. Our current lineup includes hot sauces, granola, trail bars, and plant-based butters. Our current business model mix is about 65% direct to consumer, including online sales. 25% retail and 10% pop-up. Let's break that down. So in 2022, the majority of our sales is about 90% direct consumer, while 10% of that went to wholesale. And then in 2023, we dialed down our direct consumer to 65, increased our wholesale accounts, and also offered pop-ups to showcase our culinary expertise. In regards to our current competition, to make things easier, I used two of our products, our plant-based butters and our trail bars. We are right in line with the top quality ingredients in our commercial brands. Taco Trail Bar and Miyoko's Butter. In regards to market opportunity, there is currently a $861 billion revenue opportunity for what we do. This is according to the Global Health and Wellness Food Market. And that's at a compound annual growth rate of 8%. So by 2030, it's expected to rise to $1.6 trillion. $6.1 billion is our current health food product client demand. $109 million is our total revenue opportunity. 
262,000 is our sales volume increase at assumption growth rate of 50%. And on average, $24 is the cost per order, and 23 is the average yearly purchase per customer. In regards to traction, we have steadily grown throughout the years. Since the inception of 2021, we actually broke six figures in 2023. That's two and a half years into the business. On average, it takes business about five years to generate profit. And we are currently in eight local wholesale accounts and four farmers market locations and Earth Fair in Asheville. And our target market is high-end retail locations. That's about 5,482 locations for Tana Target. And in regards to our product sales, as you can see, there is a steady demand for what we do. It's a lot of trail bars. Financial model, this is a projection of 50% increase in the next three years. So about 150 k to uh, by 2026. And then in regards to sales, about 6,606 to about 14,000. This is our current team, just the two of us. I'm Namari, and I bring 10 years of business management, operation, and marketing experience. Jeff Gabriel brings 10 years of restaurant operations management experience. To be honest, he is our secret weapon when it comes to product development. You can honestly give him a recipe, have him taste it, and he'll turn it into gold. So this is where you come in. We need your help. We've already tested our products, and we have a high client demand. We just are ready to scale. We're asking for $100,000, and that will allow us to lease a production facility and help us allow to get machinery, because the KitchenAid's not doing it. Hire production employees, and also streamline our branding and marketing. If you've enjoyed what I have to say today and would like to follow along our journey, please subscribe to our newsletter at this QR code. Thank you. Four minutes and 50 seconds. <laughs> that was good. Um, one more time, get up for Sid and Mari. What do you think, Kayla? Loved it. What do you, what do you think about Namari's delivery and her poise and her professionalism? How's she doing? Strikes me as highly professional. I think the suit jacket definitely helps. I would say still maybe a little room for like, yeah, looseness. Or like a hedge fund pitch. I mean, personality, authenticity. Yeah, authenticity and personality for sure. I would say maybe just yeah, the approachability, which is you know maybe a weird word, but like it's not smile, sweetie. I love. <laughs> I, I I found you to be very proficient. Super competent, you know your shit, so that certainly came through. But I think that what resonated most authentically with the group was that line, Gabe turns anything into gold. And people were like, kind of saw the personality behind the brand, who were crafting this crap. What do you think about Gabe's performance? Great at standing. What's the plan? Yeah, what's the plan, Gabe? I <laughs> I figured I would show up, eat some pizza, <laughs> answer some questions if I needed to. Okay, good. So I'm going to start there. How many of you are looking at Gabe and wondering when he was going to speak or do something? So it could be distracting. So, so typically with a, with a two person pitch, unless you're handing it back and forth, who would say, if you're off stage, you're on the sidelines, and then you come up with a QA. It's a chance for tomorrow so you can have a plan the audience and say, my, my co founder Gabe's back there, Gabe, wave. And Gabe, That's Gabe. the perfect spot for me, anyway. <laughs> <laughs> All right, great. Those are my, my top delivery comments. We'll go through some of those in the slides now. Anything else you want to set from the top before we go to it? No, I don't think so. All right, yeah. let us take you back to better times. Yes. It makes me feel a little like. Make America great again. I'll tell you what. Oh. I'm gonna tell you what. Because okay. it reminds me, I can't, I can't help myself. Uh, it, it feels like when, when that slogan was coming out, like Daily Show reports were going out and being like, what, what, "What was America great?" That what it was taking back yeah. to better times. So it's just taking you back to how good food used to taste before the commercialized food industry took over and made it cheap. So clean ingredients. Whole organic, let's think about those type of things. Now everyone's just trying to get fast looking for convenience. You know, if marketing is done, it's saying that healthy food is not affordable. So there's a misconception healthy food doesn't taste good. So we're trying to break that. Cool. I didn't pull up the logo on the title slide. Do you want to do for you? I think the pig is cute. That's pork chop. Pork chop. He's a real animal. He <laughs> will be. Yeah, I mean, I kind of agree with the let us take you back 
it's it's maybe a, mid, a little bit muddled. I like the font. Yeah. I also don't have a lot of you know pitch stroke experience, so I'm kind of <laughs> well. So the font is kind of we wanted to do, uh, do a ode to the south. So yeah. the fork, you know, or the cube. We're not we're not a vegan company. We offer alternatives, but for our pop ups, we do a mix of vegan and non-vegan options. Just try to promote a balanced diet. We're not taking questions until the end. Sorry. <laughs> I, the, the pig to me throws me off, especially given there's no pig in your current product mix. Pop-ups, you and I have talked about offline, they're very impressive. Yeah, there's very little in this pitch in the revenue, which I think is a highlight for the pitch itself. Your, your, your sales traction, product mix slides. But it's not jumping too far ahead. Let's go, let's go let's get into the problem slide. That's the question. It's been a real nitpick. I don't think you need in the footer problem slash opportunity. I don't think that's necessary. I think we get it. It is a lot of words. We really wanted to pare it down. And it's really something to support you as opposed to you supporting the slide and reading the slide. We could just have one in ten. And you could say, did you know that for one in ten children and adults, you recommend doing those vegetables? <clears throat> that one in ten speak would be very big on the screen. Plant butter is an interesting concept. I mean. Yeah, what's, what's plant butter? So plant butters is just dairy alternatives. Currently there's a lot of plant-based butters, but they don't have, everything contains soy or cashews, and people sometimes have allergies to that. We're trying to accommodate that, so all of our butters are soy and nut free. Okay. It's made from organic hemp milk. So I think maybe something like an overriding theme, something that was a little confusing to me is like the difference between plant-based and vegan you use animal products and some of your... So all of our product lines are plant-based. Plant-based and... Okay. But not vegan. So, except for the pop-ups. That's more showcasing the culinary experience. Get it? Yeah. Pop-ups, but they are... Speaking of the mic. Am I not close enough? There we go. Oh, yeah. Now I'm feeling it. <laughs> yeah, so the pop-ups will be more uh, prominent as, as we go. And, and, and in those, we'll showcase more of the balance between plant-based and plant-based, vegan or non-vegan. Yeah. I like seeing the product. Um, it does kind of spoil your reveal. So instead on this slide, if you held off, you're being great with product photography. If you held off on that, and instead we're showing, I don't know, like a, like, like I'm picturing, I'm picturing like a tablespoon of scraps and fast food, or you know, like it really lean into the problem because that is the solution. Right. And you're have hemp butter? I haven't had hemp butter yet, but I can't wait to try it. Can we have samples Saturday market in Nashville? Great. Okay. Go to the next slide. So this is what we want to see. So we got the right trajectory. You want to go from the problem, the value proposition. You don't, and it was been to our pitch training notes, you don't show the product yet. So you're doing this exactly the way you want to do it. Um, you're getting the Features instead of benefits, which is okay. We didn't talk about that another time. Now, I'm nitpick again. I think I find it slightly distracting. There's so much on there. People are reading instead of listening. They're making folks think instead of just be completely immersed in your presentation. So it kind of robs you again. Uh, it's it's your important slide, not the slide support you. Kind of to second that, I was very focused on whether or not cane sugar is actually bad. I was like, oh sh shoot, I thought that was the good, one of the good sugars. <laughs> Straight from the sauce. <laughs> okay. Well, I was yeah. thinking a little too far, yeah. Yeah. So our sugar alternative is date syrup and palm sugar, which okay. offers a 50% lower glycemic index. So people with diabetes really gravitate towards that. That's good. Yeah. Not palm oil. Oh, not yeah. causing deforestation. Mm -hmm. If you, how, how are we doing this slide? I would drop all the bullets okay. and say, let us take you back how healthy you food should taste. And that means, and then you gotcha. take those bullet points. Do you agree with this? Maybe. Let me know. Maybe rather than focusing on like the things that it doesn't have so much, focus on the things that it does have. Because I think like they. Oh. I like that one. Yeah. But you still don't say date and home. Yeah, I think that's a good selling point. Yeah, it's a lot to cover. I was like, "Where are right there?" <laughs> I mean, what sounds? Let's, let's pull the room. What do you want to buy? 
Logosemic index hot sauce or palm and date syrup hot sauce. Mm -hmm. Well, that does, it, it only has palm in it. Are nuts bad? No, we're just offering, offering options. So oh, for people with nut out. Yeah. Like the nut bars, we have a seed option and a nut option. Cool. Yeah. I, I still don't know what gluten is. <laughs> It's a free event. Right. This is an opportunity to do pictures instead of words. A picture is worth a thousand words. If you want the economy of scale, you get if you just have a collage of what the farmer's market table looks like, some close ups of the product, and you can say things like, Our hot sauces, did you know all of our hot sauces look the same thing? Because we use palm sugar as opposed to cane sugar, which is bad. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I don't think you need product diversification. I was going to say that. So. Yeah, well, we're done. I got kind of a few things to be redundant, but you said healthier, better for you. Driving home the point. I, I, I get that. <laughs> okay, keep going. I thought this was great. Because if you're going to give us more in a moment, if, if you didn't have this, the, the table breakdowns and the, the charts coming up, it wouldn't be enough. Yeah. But this is a really, really nice way to see the audience and let them know, like, here's here's how we make money. Here's the percentage of it is in our business. And so it should prompt in them what are your margins and what does it actually look like, which that's the next slide. So if you want to be even smoother, you could, you could play that into a transition and say, here's, you know, how we make money, percent of our businesses. Now let me show you exactly what the economics are. And so they know, oh, now how do you economics in business? How do you make money in the markets? And all that. Okay. It's not this one, just from the color. Okay. Yeah, I think the colors would be a little more poppy. Pie charts are cool though. Yeah. <laughs> love yeah. Pie charts. People love pie charts. I look at a pie chart and I'm like, this is a good presentation. <laughs> uh, there's a line here I didn't I did not like. I did not like this line. You're using a paradigm in your language. Of increase and decrease. You said we decreased in 2023 our C. Down. Right. You said decrease. Oh, okay. And I would say we grew the pie substantially through these, you know, because yeah, the pie didn't be proportional, mm -hmm. but you still made more. Did you make more money? No, you didn't. Yes. Well, from 76 to 68 in that D to C. It was a slight decrease, but you grew the pie overall. Yeah. So I think that's what say, you know, we, we broke into, we had more pop-ups and for our wholesale accounts, and that's going to be our path for future growth. Yeah. And so we continue to see this part of the pie shrinking, but the pie overall is growing. Yeah. And that doesn't have any negative connotation. You know, you're going to see this thing over. Thank you. That's great revenue for two years of business to hit six figures. Two and a half years. Yeah, it's awesome. It's great to be proud. This, this confused me a little bit, and it could just be because my brain isn't very big, but I think that the arrows, like the, <laughs> I don't know, I couldn't tell what was good and what was bad. Yeah, I, I wanted to break down the time. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> so in, in Western countries, this is a very standard XY graph. I don't know north, south, east, west. If you've ever taken a class in algebra, and you want to be up and to the right when it comes to a western okay. chart. That is our positive momentum. There's better to the right. right. That's where we're at. Yes. They're up and to the right. Right by Mykonos, which is an island in Greece. That's me, though. That's something what I said. <laughs> what did you, you told me a great story about meeting the buyer or someone from Miyoko's who yeah. has a competitive plant butter to you. Yeah, one of the sales managers, Miyoko's butter, came to her and tried her butter and said it's better than theirs. Oh my god! Like, that might be something to include on okay. your competitive matrix. Okay. What is Tato? It looks like coffee. It's a Tato uh, trail bar, so they're uh, the, a vegan it trail bar. It looks like a bag of pie. It just looks apples and oranges compared to butter. For what it's worth. So, yeah, two brands. So, yeah. Maybe the Tato thing. Okay. 
So I get that it's not, it's not a great picture of Tahoe, right? It could be more impactful if it's just a logo instead of an actual shot of the graphic image of the product. Okay. okay. I, I think what Jack's point is, by the way, we're not taking a question from the audience, but Jack's our mentor, so we'll let that one slide. Uh, you're mixing some of your products with the bars and the butters. Yeah, I didn't want to do all of them just together. But you might want to consider a petal diagram for your competitive matrix with you in the center, and then you would have all of the other product mix you touch, like hot sauces and the bars yep. and granola, and the, the petal diagram will look well for you. Okay. Thank you. Get through in person. Because there's a lot of numbers and a lot of detail. And everyone is doing math in their head and thinking and looking at big numbers, and I think everyone's <laughs> thinking this for at least 10 seconds. I don't know who Tam and Sam are, but I think that might be a big problem. Tam is the total available market. Uh, yes. So, what, can you talk through your Tam Sam song and how you these numbers? Yeah, so... Because you, you don't have to justify it now, typically, in a pitch, because you have five minutes or less. Yeah. However, if you had ten minutes or eight minutes even, you're going to want to understand the assumptions behind your market size. Yeah. So if you talk through a few of those. So TAM is basically our current client demand based on our uh, product mix, trail bars, hot sauces, so just research numbers in the U.S. domestic, and then found those numbers about that. So that's total market for hot sauce, granola, trail bars, okay. and but, butter. Yeah. Yeah, big. Uh, total revenue opportunity is 109 million, and I basically used our 5,482 retail wholesale accounts that we're trying to target, and then broke that down into sales. I mean, every grocery store, right? You're not going to find better times than um, to grab a grocery store. Albertsons. Albertsons. They right. want to be in the fresh market in the whole food and all in here, so a little more higher end groceries. So it's not every grocery store in America. It's just you know a set subset of all grocery streets. That's why you get around six point one billion to hundred nine million. And then the sales volume the song is uh, just assumption for great uh, calculation of fifty percent increase based on our total sales right now. Just so that is service obtainable market. That is based on the actual physical limitations of what they can produce, what their market actually is. So they got this with a tight end, hundred thousand dollars for equipment and supplies and raw materials, but not necessarily based on what they can sell. So that's like their top capacity. So if you were an investor or you invested in them and you're later, you can be like, hey, you told us and you're projecting to be at 262, you're only at 210. Then you want to talk about the gap or be a sales problem, and then you consider replacing the CEO. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Still sure. um, all right, keep going. No, go back. Sorry, on the slide. Uh, so, on average, the total cost per order for our products online. That's based on two and a half years of actual data traction. Yeah. So, if you want to pull that number up, you'll be able to show it. Yep. yep. And then 23 is the average yearly purchase per customer. So, that's great. Yeah. Yeah. And then I do like you have some industry data on here with the Global Health and Wellness Food Market Cater. Yeah. That's important because you want to, and the eight's actually pretty high for the market because it's and I chose global because we don't want to be just domestic. We want to expand international. Oh, I love and hate this slide. There's so much to love. I know. And so much to hate. <laughs> Kayla, how do you feel about this slide? I love and hate it so much. <laughs> Too much data. What do you What do you love about it? Lots of there's a big picture. What I hate yeah. is there are lots of numbers. Oh, so many numbers. Yeah. Do you need those numbers? That's so many sandwiches. I know. That is a lot of sandwiches. <laughs> but the trail bar, like, we sold five pounds on a lot of trail bars. Yeah. It's all gold lighting. Yeah, hot sauce. So those are great. I think there is cool. So let's, let's just start going to the top right. This chart on the left is perfect. We get it. It's like itself. It's simple. We can grasp the growth where you've been and fantastic. Top right, eight wholesale accounts, four farmers markets, Earth Fair, Asheville. Great. That is just based on what you already have. Target retail locations is completely unnecessary. Okay. I mean, that's put that in the appendix somewhere to explain your your previous slide. Okay. To explain your SAM. Yeah. That's the SAM. Okay. So, yeah, I just think that's completely unnecessary here. And it, again, it's pulling the focus from what people know about. Gotcha. Now, total products, I would 
cut that out and instead do a stack bar chart. Mm. So if you just chose revenue, and then we saw you know sandwiches. This line. Yeah, that line. That would yeah. be more compelling. You can have a legend on there. Not critical, but it's a light slide, so it'll, it'll, it'll kind of pop with some colors and some branding to be more attractive. Gabe, did you make every one of the sandwiches? Very fast too, by the way, the slide. And the next one is Yeah. Great, you really sped through these. Which if you do in a five minute pitch, if you have less detail. Yeah. There's so many so much detail on the slides, there's so many numbers, we're trying to catch up and I'm looking at the left column and I'm trying to see the bars and then you're already on the next slide. Okay. So either if you're going to keep that pace, which I thought was a perfect pace for this room in this kind of pitch, yeah. you're going to have to lighten up some of the detail. This is four loop projections. Yeah. It just, it just flew by. So that, this is an emphasis issue. Okay. Emphasis issue. Okay. Great pictures. You guys look great. You look so strong. Yeah. 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 I know. Not, not far. <laughs> better than anything. I think it's a perfect level of detail for a yeah, big headshot. You see, you guys look great. It's good professional pictures. Headline of who you are and the greatest hit for your career. That's why it really solidifies your credibility for this whole pitch. And you had it with your delivery, with your competence, your professionalism, and this and this should be sealing the deal. Yeah, what's yeah. what's happening? Is, is this a party? What is a party? party? This is from an event we did at a pop-up. Now go through with the, what the pop-ups are, where you're doing them, and what's the point of that. So pop-ups, we do them in multiple venues, partner with local breweries, wineries, and it's just to promote <coughs> ourselves and showcase our culinary expertise. So oftentimes people don't get to see what we actually can do. So they pick up the bars and say, oh, you can cook. Like, yes. And it's to just showcase, like, this specific event was an all-vegan five-course wine pairing dinner. Get yeah, more time to pick a minute pitch if you want some more talent pop-ups. Yeah. The reason I really don't like this one is two reasons. The two reasons I don't like this one are on the bottom, current status, slash, slash ask, slash use of funds. It's like, normally you'd pick one of those, and I have all three. And again, like the earlier, it's telling you that you don't need this subheading on every slide. Um, and you're asking for 100K, which begs the next question, for what? Which one we'll hear about? And I think that was it. Debt, is it a revenue share? Are, you, are we offering equity? Like, you know how much you need, but it's kind of missing that before one. Are you forming all of the bars by hand? Yes. Yeah. Oh my god, it takes about six hours to do each one of the bars by hand. Wow. That's why are there six dollars? I think throughout the slide, I, I was curious about the bars, because I feel like that is a pretty saturated market, plant mm -hmm. based bars. Mm -hmm. So I was curious about what sets your bars apart. And I thought that would be a fun opportunity for, like, a, you know. Raising the bar for pun. Yes, well, we got Kayla. <laughs> so, with the gel bars, something that sets ours apart different from a lot of the other ones is in big part the date syrup that we use is the sweetener in there. That cuts the glycemic index of the bars in half compared to most other sweeteners and things that are available. Or uh, syrup, which has a much higher glycemic index. We also offer with ours a variety of things that fit within people's uh, dietary restrictions. So, some are just seeds, some are not sand seeds, but you did a great job. You have the right pitch already. Yeah. Thank you. 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 And I think your last slide is just a QR code. Yep. Great. Yeah, as is, like, you, you know, you're prepared at 95% of your muscle pitch. We're really trying to turn the screws on you. And yeah. really find ways to iterate and improve. Did you find this process helpful? Yes, most definitely. I'm actually going through the process for the NCAD of grant right now. So this helps me break down we got to drive business, our business plan. Fantastic. And for those in the audience, John, I still do get the first question, I promise. No, but I'm not ready yet. Did you all find this format helpful to see what it looks like when reviewers go through a pitch? Or is this too pedantic and pedestrian? Not great. Okay. In that case, I know you all have such a wonderful audience. Thank you so much for listening so intently. John Snover, first question to you, bud. I'm not going to say you're chaos. The question is, are you utilizing Blue Ridge Food Ventures or using them currently? 
No, we are. Yes, we are familiar with them. Their rates are a little higher. Our release right now is just pumping. Does anybody know what Blue Ridge Food Ventures is? Can somebody want to explain it to my dear friend and co-host, Kayla Clark from Blind Date Live ABL? It's a staff commissary. <laughs> I can Google it. Okay. <laughs> Next question. Amy Jackson. Go ahead. Glycemic index. index needs to be explained. I, 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 I'm a big Splenda fan. Yeah. So I hear about cane sugar, and I think that's like good enough for me. So they can dissolve in Splenda. That's going to be bad. Thank you. Sarah, any question? In energy dilution. Yes. Yeah. That's a great way to talk about the difference between a feature and a benefit. Feature is lower glycemic index. Benefit is the crash or the feeling of the energy you're going to get. All right, Cheryl? Yeah, I'm really curious if you could explain why you decided to go into such a diversified group. It's really hard to get into retail, you know, with all of those different products. It's different buyers for every category. Tell me a little bit more about that. So that comes from Investment 101. You need to have a diversification in your portfolio. So some people may not like bars, some people may not like hot sauces. What we're trying to do is accommodate everyone because our ultimate goal is to make multiple different types of products in the end and have our own grocery chain that is stuck with one type of product. That takes a huge amount of investment yes. to, to do that. So I you know, don't know where the 100, I, I would have gone for 500,000, not 100K. Yeah, well this one is, we're, this is just a number that we're just throwing out. I mean, I'm not really asking for investors right now because we want to try to bootstrap. So, but this is just a showcase model. So if this was an NCI you know, for 15000 how would that last slide change? So that one would just strictly be doing production facility. Becky, and then we'll start working way that way, and then that way. Becky, please, how does Pop-Ups grow with the brand? We incorporate our products into our Pop-Up line as well. We actually had a lot of people who find us through these Pop-Ups, or, you know, wouldn't have known about us otherwise, and then they come and open it up to the products that we also have. Wait, 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 sorry, I, I'm so sorry to do that. That's not why I said it was going to happen. Kayla Clark, please pick our next Q&A. How do you look at that? Yeah, yes. Right now, we're trying to work. It's to introduce ourselves. So, you know, this specific event that we last did was at Cultura, in partnership with Wicked Weed, which a lot of people are familiar with. So then it's just exposing us to uh, clientele that we never would. And then also showing our brand and how what we can do with food and kind of elevating our standards and experience. Yes, you, sir. Thank you. I'm Corey. That's I run a communications company, so you should definitely judge my worth based on my advice here. <laughs> Duh. I want to see the demographics of people. 
Yep. When you're talking about bars, how many bars are seen? What options do they have, etc. Perfect. Um, yeah. Great feedback. Thank you for it. I think maybe like a testimonials page too. Really good to showcase. I would do demographics. I would do. I would do fake people and introduce them at the beginning of the PowerPoint yeah. and walk them through every element of the customer life cycle and I would do two or three. No one thinks, no one in here has came into this presentation before you said it and knew anything about seed bars. You know, because unless you have them except for the people that have to eat them, right? And the rest of us are just like, okay, now there's six dollars around the bar. No, I'm going on forever. <laughs>
Pop by Mountain Biz Works, a bunch of us are going to be there. We will rip apart your application and build it back up before you submit it. Looking forward to doing that. Thank you all so much for being here. This is a ton of fun. Thank you, Kayla Clark. What? Hey, what? That's separate. So that's not an announcement for the group. That's just for the moment. Okay, that, thank you all so much for being here. Love you. Bye.